in the female dating strategy uh, page, there was a uh, post called Beware of F-Boys Who Pretend to Be High Value Men. Mistakes I've made and how I dodged the bullet. Now, what's interesting about this is that this is going to be a cautionary uh, um, post, right? Where this woman's trying to tell women, hey, don't high value men are going to do these things and you can't fall for them. And I have found this to be true in my dating journey, right? Is that the secret to getting women in terms of knowing what they want is to listen to the things that women complain about and then do those things because those are the things that they actually fall for on a subconscious base level. Now, when I tell you guys to do the things that they're complaining about, I want you to do them, but in a way that, but I want you to do it to women that you actually want to get with. These women are experiencing guys that know what women want and then are doing those things to get them in bed and then leave them. Also of notes, sometimes that happens a lot of times I find, again, women sometimes will hook up with the guy and then that's when all their secrets come out and the guy's like, oh, I got to get out of here. And then that guy gets called an F boy for effing and leaving, really. He effed and then found out some bull crap and then left, you know? So take that with a grain of salt. But suffice to say, I thought it'd be interesting to read through this because you'll be able, I'm going to point along the way what they're talking about, why they think the thing that they feel, and then why you as a guy need to do it. So let's share that part of the screen as well. So let's see, share here. Yes, so this is, uh, pull this up to the stage. Add to the stage, here we go. Beware of F-boys who pretend to be high value men, mistakes I've made in the past. So let's go ahead and read this. I'll, I'll make the screen a little bit bigger here. So let's see how this shows on my screen. Fantastic, all right. So this lady says, recently I've had a curious experience dating a man who ended up being a jerk, but this experience was useful for me, giving me many lessons on how low value men have evolved and can now behave like high value men if all they want is a hookup. I hate to spoil this lady's parade, but high value men, more so than low value men, are all about hooking up with multiple women and not keeping any of them as girlfriends. But I digress. She says, I'll describe here the tactics as the date progresses, how they pretend to be high value men and what signs you should be paying attention to in order to dodge a bullet and not waste your time like I did. She said, I didn't hook up with them, but I wasted my time. Okay, so you're going to notice an interesting thing here, right? You're going to notice the woman, women's going to be talking about things that this guy tried to do. And a lot of things are going, to, are going to sound like things that I've told you guys to do on this show, right? Just be mindful of that. I'll explain all that. So initial contact, how he pretends to be high value man. If you met him online, his profile will be very well written. He won't have any attention grabbing or shirtless pics. He'll look very dignified, like a man you could probably introduced to his parents. I tell you guys all the time with dating apps, you shouldn't be doing shirtless pictures and that you need to have a well put together bio, all right? She says, he'll be very polite and attentive. He doesn't make any grammar mistakes. He's clever and has a good vocabulary. <laughs> he seemingly respects your boundaries. If you're talking on Tinder, he asks for your number in a very polite and careful way saying, can I have your number? But I'll understand if you want to keep talking here, it's all right. So, you're probably listening to this and thinking like, Harry, that how, how is any of that, that bad things, you know? And this is where we get into the fact that for some of you guys that are trying to be nice guys, you're, you're doing all these things and you're thinking, but I'm doing these things and why is it that women are rejecting me? And the honest reason is that there have been women who guys have done this stuff too that ended up using them. So they get to learn, okay, if a guy's being nice to me and doing things cordially, and presenting himself well, he's an F boy and I can't trust him. But then on the other hand, it's like, okay, but if he's doing the opposite of that stuff, he's a jerk and I don't want him either. So women are stuck in this weird la-la land of like, when guys do nice things, they're probably a bad guy, but I want a guy that does nice things. I just don't want him to be a bad guy. And to be fair, that is, a, that is the thing that confuses them and they get into because there have been guys that have probably used these tactics to bed them. It just sucks that this is actually behavior you need to be doing to get women. Now notice, she said that he did all this stuff and lo and behold, it worked on her. So does this mean you as a guy should or should not do this stuff? What it means is that you should do this stuff because clearly it worked, right? And I'll, I'll tell this in, at the end of how, how you keep doing this stuff in spite of what this woman's saying, all right? So she says, science is an F boy. He'll be very compatible with you right from the beginning. Of course, there are cases. So see, so she's going to flip flop. She says, the science is an F boy is that 
he'll be compatible right away. But of course, there are cases where that does happen. So this is what women are like. Women are, women are thinking of like, okay, so I'm going to go on a date. If we're compatible right away, then he's an F-boy. But also, if we're compatible right away, that, that's what I want. I want a guy that I'm compatible with. Oh, I'm so confused. Oh, my God. Anyway, she says, it'll feel too good to be true. He always likes everything you do. If you want to test him, say you like a certain band or movie. He'll say he loves it, too. And when he says that, you say, yeah, but, you know, maybe it's not really that good. I don't like this and that about it. If he agrees with you again, be careful. It's a red flag. This is, by the way, why, guys, why I say, you know, this is the thing women are going to test you on. So whatever your opinion is about what you're stating about anything, you got to be congruent with it, whether it's going to make her angry or not. I have in my past had conversations with women that I've dated about like, you know, some of the gurus that I followed or things that I believe in. And they're like, oh my God, this, well, and I just stick to my guns. Like, well, that's, that's what's worked. And that's what I believe. And that's what I think about. And so you don't have to agree with me. We don't have to agree on everything in order to, for, to make this be a thing. But I find that doing that makes them realize, oh, he's, he's going to be truthful with me. Okay. So I know in the future now, if a situation comes up and I need an honest opinion, he'll be the guy because he's not going to just sway because of something I want to hear. Women actually want that from you. But anyway, then she says, another sign that he's an F boy. He'll want to text you for hours at the beginning. He'll try to force intimacy. And so it goes. He'll ask you out after one or two days of texting. Maybe he'll ask you out on the same day. High value men don't do that. They want to make sure you're not crazy and that you're dignified and compatible enough to go out with. Well, that's a lie because the thing is this, women are on dating apps to date. The number of women I've heard complain about, this guy's been talking to me for like three or four days and like won't ask me out yet. That's regular because women do actually want you to ask them out after one or two days of texting, which clearly worked because that's what this guy did and got a date. Then she says, love bombing. He'll begin with a daily good morning text from right from the beginning. There's nothing wrong with good morning text per se, but if he tries to talk to you all day long, calls you babe, pampers you a lot from the beginning, and is too eager to know all the details of your schedule, be careful. So now, notice we're getting to territory where it's like some of the things she said, I've said to you, hey guys, keep doing this thing. Other things she said, like, oh, this guy's sending all these texts and nicknames, stuff like that, I say, don't do. See, this is why... You can't listen to women as it pertains to getting dating advice because they're going to mix in things that works on them that they wish didn't work and then things that legitimately don't work on them that you should never, never do. And because it's a woman saying it, you're not going to be able to tell which one of these things is true. Should I not text her or should I text her? Should I be telling her that I want to see you after one or two dates or should I not? You're not going to know because of them. They're basing it off of, well, I feel as if this shouldn't work, but I feel that this does work, but this shouldn't also work over here. But if a guy does this, he's really love bombing. But also I want to be told that I'm pretty. So like, that's why you can't take the advice because it's going to be so jumbled up. You're not going to know what's going to work. And women trying to teach you how you as a guy should date. It, it, it's an exercise in futility at best, you know, overall. So then she says, my mistake was he asked me out two days after we started talking. He proposed me a dinner date on a weekday and I accepted it. I tell you guys all the time, ask women out on weekdays because what I found in dating is that when I try to ask them out on weekends, they're the ones that are like, I got a busy schedule or this feels like it's too soon because why would she give up a free day to see somebody that she doesn't know? So that's actually great advice. And clearly it worked because she said yes to the date. Uh, I should have known better and postponed it and made it happen during the weekend. But she's not aware that going out on a weekend is going to make her feel as though this guy's already trying to force her in a relationship. And that's another thing too. Most women, see, here's the thing. Because as guys, we're the hunters, we have to know all about the thing we're trying to hunt, whether it's an animal or a woman we're trying to date. All they're doing is being receptive to what we do. So they have to learn the tactics we're going to do, but they don't have to like do anything in terms of trying to get us. So they're not aware of some of the things that they're asking us to do that's going to not work on them. Again, I found asking women out on weekends, more often than not, did not work well on women. So me taking that advice from women would be dumb unless she's like, has that kind of schedule in the week, like a nurse like that, where she works nice and she can't go out, then fine. If the weekend's the only t date I can take, totally great. She doesn't sound like that kind of girl, though. She, she clearly was free to run a weekday. So I would only ask her out on weekdays until she came to me and said, hey, so let's go out on a weekend, right? Because then I know that she's willing to give up that free time that she has to spend with me. Anyway, so then she goes into the first date, how he pretends to be a high value man. So she says, he'll invite you to a dinner date or a nice restaurant. It's not some effortless BS. He wants to know what kind of food you like to eat, and so it goes. So in other words, him being like, hey, do you like steak? Do you, do you like Thai food? Let's do that. She's saying that's that, that's him trying to fake like he's high value, okay? He will never go Dutch. 
He will always pay for everything. So we got a woman here saying a guy that's trying to pretend to be high value is going to pay for the date. So you know what? When you go on a date, don't let him do that. You you pay for the you pay for your half of the date, and no woman's going for that. So again, she's here trying to give warnings to women, but all women want that. Women want a guy who's going to plan the date. That's going to be a nice restaurant. Women want a guy that's not going to ask her to pay. And yet she's saying here, but that's a signal that blah, blah, blah. So again, she's she's giving up the store. She's telling you what worked on her for this date. Anyway, she says, he'll be willing to pick you up at your place. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend you guys either do that. Try to meet her at the place the first time. Uh, he says, if you tell him you'd rather go to the restaurant by yourself or Uber, he doesn't freak out. He seems cool and understanding. So again, she's like, so a guy that's cool and understanding, if you want to take an Uber, that's a red flag. But also if a guy like fights you on taking an Uber, he's probably a creepy guy and that's a red flag. Do you see how women end up staying single themselves and helping other women stay single? Like you can't have two opposing thoughts in your head. Is a guy telling you to take an Uber a good thing or a bad thing? It can't be both. Anyway, so then... Another sign that he's pretending to be high value is he doesn't flake. He gets there on time. He's punctual for the date. Stupid. Uh, he is very talkative. He seems very interested in you. So she's basically saying, look, because I get what she's trying to say. She's trying to say, it's like, look, there are guys out there that are wolves in, sleep, in sheep's clothing. They have learned the game of how to be an appropriate guy and are doing appropriate guy things, but it's all in the disguise of trying to sleep with you. So therefore you can't fall for it. But also there are some guys that are genuinely do that, but you should maybe sleep with them, but maybe not so soon, but also you do want to sleep with them, but they, they can be dangerous. Like it's just a cycle, right? So anyway, so science is an F boy. He knows he, he knows the entire staff of the restaurant basically because, oh, he's been there a lot of times and taking other girls there. Yeah, in the beginning of dating, you don't owe these women taking them to brand new places that they've never been to and that you've never been to. You take women where you are most comfortable. If they get the idea that the wait staff knows you because you go here a lot for dates, good. Because guess what? Women like men that they know get other women. And so the fact that the wait staff knows you should be thinking, oh, he comes here quite often. Quite often, he must get a lot of girls that want to date him. Oh my God. I like you would think that would be a deterrent, but that's actually a woman that's like in her head, she's thinking, and he picked me now. Awesome. That's amazing. Anyway, another sign he's an F boy. Wait for it, guys. Wait for it. He's too attractive. He said, she says, I know there are many attractive, uh, high value men out there, but if the guy is jaw dropping hot, beware. This guy I met was absurdly hot, and I felt the sparks. The moment I saw him. So she's trying to say this is a bad thing. But notice, she said the guy was very hot and I automatically felt things for him. So this is not actually a bad thing. She's mad at it now because this guy didn't work out. But I guarantee you, she's not getting off Reddit and saying, from now on, it's only ugly guys. There's only mid-tier guys. No. If another highly attractive hot guy is out there that tickles her fancy, trust me, she's not going to be complaining that she found him attractive and felt a spark. You know? So then she says... He seems absurdly attracted to you. Of course, we want men to be attracted to us, but this guy is way too attractive. This guy I met was literally jaw dropped the moment he looked at me. It was an incredibly intense and romantic moment. I won't deny that. And it felt like something out of a romantic comedy. What I tell you guys, women want to feel like they're living out a romantic comedy or a movie that they're the special girl that this is happening to. So she's trying to make it as a warning to women, but women want to feel this. And here's the thing, because women's decisions are so tied to their feelings. It doesn't matter what she says because women want to feel this. So she's going to, so a woman's going to be out there reading this. Okay. Next time a guy tells me I'm jack dead gorgeous and looks at me with intensity. I know that's a trick and I'm not going to fall for it. And then it's going to happen. And then she's going to be like, but I feel, and that's all that's going to matter. Darn what she said. All that matters is when these guys are doing these processes, it triggers a woman to feel things for him that biologically she cannot turn off even if she tried. So then, oh, and then she says, uh, narcissists and dangerous men have a specific way to look at women and make them feel seduced. It's the, it's the narcissistic stare. Be careful. But also, a guy could be like, okay, I've studied this up. If I find a girl attractive, I know what look to legitimately give to signal to her that I find her attractive without verbalizing it. 
or I know how to verbalize it in a way that's going to turn her on, which I want because I want that woman. I genuinely like her. And so this is another tool to have my arsenal to do when I want to indicate to a woman, I find you attractive enough to hook up with and possibly be in a relationship with. So again, these aren't bad things she's saying. It's just, she's annoyed because the wrong guy to her did it. And even again, the wrong guy that did it was a guy that she found immensely attractive. So then another, another very bad sign, guys, he'll try to get physical very fast. He'll try to kiss you or hug you very quickly during that first date. Hey, I've been on dates where the women want to do that to me on that first date. Should I now say, oh, this is a dangerous woman. She's a narcissist. She's trying to kiss me. What's going on? She says, in my case, he said, I looked much more beautiful in person. And when I said he also looked much more handsome in person, he said, if you don't mind, I need to do this. And he gave me a light kiss on my lips. I found that endearing. But now, looking back retrospectively, there were red flags everywhere. So had this gone her way, this would have been a story they told at their uh, engagement party. Oh, we met that first date and I just knew from day one, he was he was complimenting me and saying all the right things. And then I just felt a moment and he was like, I need to have you. And he kissed me, and it was just so romantic. That would be the story if things went her way. But because it didn't, now retroactively, it's a red flag. But yet again, women want this fantasy. They want guys to do exactly what she's talking about. She just doesn't wanna, she, she's feeling stupid right now for choosing the wrong guy that gave her the right feelings that a guy should give if he's legitimately interested. That's the problem here. This does not mean that anything this guy is actually doing is bad strategy for you guys, all right? This is actually great strategy because as you can see, she's saying this all turned me on, including this part here, where another red flag for, for, um, for a uh, F boy, he's a very good kisser. If he's a very good kisser, if physical contact with him feels addictive and too good to handle, oh, beware. He may be a high value man who knows how to kiss, but he could also be an F boy that is just trying to lure you into bed. So does this mean that you as a guy should be a bad kisser so she'll feel better about being with you? Like, oh, he kissed terribly. Oh, he's not an F boy. No, that's not stupid. Of course not. So again, you guys are going to get better kissing because they want guys that do this stuff. So now we go to, after the first date, how he pretends to be high value. He won't mention hooking up. He won't try to have a one-night stand with you. So again, she's saying that your guys' strategy by default of that should be, no, you should be trying to, you should be mentioning all the hookup, hooking up and sexing, and you should be trying to push for a one-night stand. So let's play this out, right? He's an F boy. I'm not going to mention sex. Have a great night. Best of luck to you, blah, 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 blah. Gets home with the girlfriends. He didn't mention sex once. He didn't try to hook up with me or touch me. He must be gay. That's going to be the conversation. Or, end of the night, hey, so you should come back to my place. No, I don't want to. No, we should hook up and do a one-night stand. Oh, how dare you? Uh, goes home. Can you believe he wouldn't respect my boundaries and blah, 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 blah? So you can see this is going to be quite the conundrum. So I tell you guys on those first couple of dates, I don't mention sex or hooking up at all. But I do say also, if you're reading things from her that indicate she's open for a kiss, a really close hug, or going back to her place for coffee, that you just react to those situations in the way that you want to. If it's you want to do that on a first or second night, go ahead and go with it because she's already opening up that door. For you to be like, well, I didn't mention sex, but then she mentioned sex, so now I'm still going to mention it. I'm going to not go home with her. When you want to, that to me is asinine. But she's giving mixed signals. Do you now reward a guy for not mentioning sex, or do you chastise him for not bringing it up and saying he didn't bring up sex, therefore he's an F-boy? I found my strategy of not bringing it up usually results in me getting hookups faster. So I would say, yeah, do exactly what this guy's doing. Don't bring it up. So then she says, he'll drive you home if you feel safe around him. As opposed to, yeah, get back in your car and pay your own freaking Uber. Like, so being a gentleman apparently is a bad idea. But it worked on her. So again, do this if she allows you to. He'll give a polite goodnight kiss. No sexual innuendos involved. Again, she's trying to tell women be on the lookout for guys that don't mention sex, get you home respectfully, give you a good night kiss, and don't try to come up to your place. Is it any re wonder why women are losing at the dating game these days? Because they are confused about what's going to work. They're trying to protect themselves from being hurt, but they're also inadvertently protecting themselves from guys that would actually want to do good things for them because these guys are going to come on these dates and do these things, and she'd be like, oh, no, don't do it. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, he'll, te he'll text you as soon as he gets home, telling you he had an amazing night and that he's too eager to meet you again. Now, now, again, this is one of those things where I give you guys that same advice. Do not do this. But again, 
I tell you that, and I say the other stuff, do all this other stuff also. And again, I found that's actually worked. You're talking to a person that is not in the habit of dating women and doesn't understand why doing that move actually will cause women to be turned off. So what do we do? We learn not to do that. And then women will still call us F boys because we're just playing with their emotions because we're not texting them. Like you don't win either way. Is it okay if I text you or not? Am I gonna win with you if I do text you or if I leave you alone? Science is an F boy from all that stuff. Uh, love bombing continues for the next few days, texting all the time. He'll send you videos, pictures of himself, songs he likes. He'll ask you three times a day how you're doing, what you're doing. He'll try to get to know every single detail about your schedule and when you're doing. So, so what she's saying right now, this isn't actually, it's not signs of an F boy. It's signs of a guy that doesn't know what he's doing because these are things that are going to start to make her feel up. Oh, He's trying to force me to spend more time with him. Why is that? Because he wants my body. He wants my body. And so I tell you guys, do not do these things. Do not text her anything that involves a good night or a good morning text. You wait a few days. You're not trying to text her nonstop because these are things that will turn women off. Now, this woman is going to say, make you think he's an F boy because he did this stuff knowing that it was going to turn her on. But this is also what causes burnout sooner than later with women. Okay. Uh, he says he'll mention details of the first date saying it was so amazing. You're so gorgeous. It was the best date first date I've ever had in my lifetime and blah, blah, blah. He says, hi, she says, high value men don't do that. Why? Because they don't want to scare you off by seeming too eager or desperate. Now, again, this is an example of like, she got that one right, but she's got so much other stuff wrong. Would you be able to tell the difference between what would actually work on here? What would not, or what would make you look like an F boy versus the guy that was genuinely interested? You would not. That's why you had me to tell you this stuff, because as a person that's experienced this, I can tell you this part she got right, but those other parts she got very wrong. She says her mistake when my guy tried to, to sex me, of course, I refused to do so. Never sex the guy if you haven't had hooked up with him yet. The problem is I just said, well, I don't want to talk about these things so soon, but I didn't block and delete him immediately because I was very attracted to him and I thought he had many high value man qualities. I should have just blocked him because that was a clean sign he was low value, a low value man. Well, again, no, because there are, here's the thing that she's not getting. There are high value men. I mean, legit, like they have a Fortune 500 company. Because I've, I've coached dudes that have like the the all the money in the bank and got a good position at their job that people society would consider high value that still do not know what they're doing with women. This is why, regardless of how much money you have, it doesn't matter how much money you got if at the end of the day, you don't know how to make a woman naturally feel things for you without it feeling forced. This is a guy that could have been high value in terms of how the world would judge him, but in terms of him dealing with women, he has no idea what he's doing. And so he's turning off women by doing these things. And she's thinking, because he's turning me off, he must be low value. No, he's he's now low value to her because of his actions. His position in life could actually be high value, but high value plus not knowing what you're doing with women equals low value in women's eyes. So then she goes into more stuff about second date follow-ups, blah, 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 blah. Um, why you should make it clear you're only a hookup in a relationship. And all this other stuff. This is a lot to read through. But the point is this. She goes down here and says, um, these are signs that, let's see, why you should make it clear you only hook up in a relationship. Um, and then she says why her strategy was wrong. The minute I said I wanted to, to hook up only when I felt safe and trusted, he started to fake intimacy like mad. He wanted to FaceTime every evening and he would talk to me for hours saying he loves talking to me and that he adored me and found me amazing. I was very attracted to him. So I fell for that. And I thought we were really having an emotional connection. He said, uh, um, but I didn't realize that he was just manipulating me. So I will say this part here is key, guys. For those of you that think that you're doing a woman a favor by texting her all the time, calling all the time, et cetera, that is very much a thing that you're thinking is you just showing your honest like for her. You're trying to show her that you do want to be with her. And you don't want to play games. So therefore, you're trying to show her this stuff in hopes that she gets that. But based on women's experiences, the previous guys that have done that, all she's reading is, He's trying to force himself to be integrated into my life so soon because he wants that hookup or because he's needy for attention or because no other women want him. And that is a huge red flag to women. So on that part, I will say she is absolutely correct. But in terms of the stuff she said earlier, right? So all the stuff in the first parts of dating where he, she said things like, you know, oh, science is the F boy. Well, uh, he invited me to a nice date. He paid for the meal. He was willing to pick me up. He, uh, he didn't flake and got there on time. He seemed interested in me. He uh, knew the staff of the restaurant. He was overly attractive. He, he was uh, absurdly attracted to me and was interested in me. He was a good kisser. He didn't mention sex. He drove me home. He gave me a good night kiss and did nothing more. He get, Like all those things, she is telling you 
All these things worked on me to fall for this guy. And so you got to understand, guys, that, again, women are going to tell you when they complain about guys that that's what you need to be doing. I told the story here before about the girl I had a crush on in college that she got invited up to a, a friend of mine's room and was crying to me about how she went up there and, like, she ended up, like, going down on him. And I was all max, like, oh, how could he do that? And then in hindsight, I was like, wait, but I wanted to be that guy. Like, what did he do? He invited up and said, hey, come to my place. And then while they were there, he's like, hey, you should do some stuff. Put his pants down and says, so what's going to happen? And then she did it. And so I'm being thinking like, that's not how you should treat a girl. No. In hindsight, that's he did all the steps he needed to do to, to get her to do the thing that she didn't want to be responsible for doing, even though she's the one that did the action. Like, at the point that he put his pants down, the door is right there because I was in the same dormitory. She could have just been like, not for me, and walked out the door. Did she do that? She did not. So understand, guys, you're going to, and this is, especially for you nice guys out there, you're going to have female friends that you probably have crushes on or women that you have just met that you like, you want to date, but you're not trying to get it. And you're going to, you know, become their, their, their guy best friend that they tell all these stories to. And you're going to be hearing time and time again, oh, this guy, he's so blah, 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 blah. He did this thing and this thing and this thing, but it didn't stop her from going out with him. Oh, he never plans dates. He all just tells me to come over to his place to do stuff, but she's going over there, over there to do stuff. So understand, guys. If you really want intel on the women that you want to date, just listen to them complain about guys. Everything that they're complaining about as it pertains to getting guys, I can assure you they're mad because they fell for those things from guys that ended up being a-holes. All you got to do is do those same things and then not be an a-hole. So yeah, you do the things, you invite her to this is that. When you get, when you, when you, uh, at the end of dates, you ignore her for a few days, but then you're going to hit her up. Like the a-hole thing is never hit her up again, but you're going to hit her up. You're just going to give her some time away from you to miss you and think about you, but then you're going to hit her up. Take her out again, show her a good time, repeat. And you're going to do that, but you're going to stand up for yourself. You're going to be willing to, you know, have a nice conversation with her and get to know her. Like, you're going to do the things that women say they don't want from guys because the things that you're doing clearly aren't getting you women. Like, you know, back in the day, me not talking about sex and me not, you know, me over complimenting women. None of that stuff worked. At the point that I tempered that down, you would think that's mean behavior. Oh, but I want a guy that's going to call me all the time and give me flowers. No, they don't. Because they don't, they don't date those guys. They date the guys that they're wishing the guy would text them or call them. Oh, it's been three days. I haven't heard from him. They're wanting the guy that gave him a good hookup and then won't talk to him for three or four days. Oh, we had a hookup. He must be using me. I can't believe I fell for it. But that's what they want. Because here's the thing. It's fine for you to do so-called F-boy behavior. Just on the other end of that, you end up being an actual good guy that you're giving them an ounce of what F-boys do. But then you're, you're leaving this to their own devices to wonder if you're going to be that guy and then you swoop in and you're not. That builds up in a level, a, a slight level of emotional roller coaster. It makes you unpredictable. It makes you mysterious. And those things are also things that women complain about that they actually need from you in order to fall for you. So hopefully some of what I said in this, in this long rant about that will help you out. But suffice to say, guys, like those F4 behaviors she talked about, trust me, guys, those are the things you need to be doing minus the actual F-boy part at the end of it.